To meet the bridegroom. This devotion is based off of Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. In this parable, there are ten young women, each carrying a lighted lamp. All are anxiously waiting for the appearance of the bridegroom. But there is a delay. Hour after hour passes, the watchers become weary and fall asleep. At midnight, the cry is heard, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The sleepers, suddenly awakening, spring to their feet. They see the procession moving on, bright with torches and glad with music. They hear the voice of the bridegroom. The ten maidens seize their lamps and begin to trim them in haste to go forth. But five have neglected to fill their flasks with oil. They did not anticipate so long a delay. In distress, they appeal to their wiser companion, saying, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the waiting five, with their freshly trimmed lamps, they have no oil to spare, and they answer, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell. While they went to buy, the procession moved on, and left them behind. The five with lighted lamps joined the throng and entered the house with the bridal train, and the door was shut. When the foolish virgins reached the banqueting hall, they received an unexpected denial. The master of the feast declared, I know you not. They were left standing without in the blackness of the night. The two classes of watchers represent the two classes who profess to be waiting for their Lord. They are called virgins because they profess a pure faith. By the lamps is represented the word of God. The oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In the parable, all ten virgins went out to meet the bridegroom. All had lamps and vessels for oil. For a time, there was seen no difference between them. So with the church that lives just before Christ's second coming. All have a knowledge of the scriptures. All have the message of Christ's near approach and confidently expect his appearing. But as in the parable, so it is now. A time of waiting intervenes. Faith is tried. And when the cry is heard, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Many are not ready. They have no oil in their vessels with their lamps. They are destitute of the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit of God, a knowledge of his word is of no avail. The theory of truth unaccompanied by the Holy Spirit cannot quicken the soul or sanctify the heart. One may be familiar with the command and promises of the Bible, but unless the Spirit of God sets the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish truth from error, and they will fall under the masterful temptations of Satan. The class represented by the foolish virgins are not hypocrites. They have a regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. They are attracted to those who believe in the truth, but they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit's working. They have not fallen upon the rock, Christ Jesus, and permitted their old nature to be broken up. This class are represented also by the stony ground hearers. They receive the word with readiness, but they fail of assimilating its principles. Its influence is not abiding. The Spirit works upon man's heart, according to his desire, and consent in planting in him a new nature. But the foolish have not held communion with him, therefore they do not know how to trust how to look and live. Their service to God degenerates into a form. The Apostle Paul points out that this will be the special characteristic of those who live just before Christ's second coming. He says, In the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. This is the class that in time of peril are found crying peace and safety. They lull their hearts into security and dream not of danger. When startled from their lethargy, they discern their destitution and entreat others to supply their lack. But in spiritual things, no man can make up for another's deficiency. 
It is in a crisis that the character is revealed. Both parties were taken unaware, but one was prepared for the emergency, the other was found without preparation. So now, a sudden and unlooked for calamity, something that brings the soul face to face with death, will show whether there is any real faith in the promises of God. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test comes at the close of human probation, when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Saddest of all words that ever fell on mortal ears are those words of doom, I know you not. We cannot be ready to meet the Lord by waking when the cry is heard, Behold the bridegroom, and then gather up our empty lamps to have them replenished. We cannot keep Christ apart from our lives here, and yet be fitted for his companionship in heaven. In the parable, the wise virgins had oil in their vessels with their lamps. Their light burned with undimmed flame throughout the night of watching. Shining out in the darkness, it helped to illuminate the way to the home of the bridegroom to the marriage feast. So the followers of Christ are to shed light into the darkness of the world. Through the Holy Spirit, God's word is a light as it becomes a transforming power in the life of the receiver. This sums up today's devotion. We hope that you let your light shine to all the world, that they may know Him. Did you like what you heard? Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you, and God bless.